This video for Math 94 covers examples from homework number 7, covering sections 9.5 and 9.6 in the book. This video is about complex numbers, and it's like problems 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 on the homework. Let's talk about the idea of numbers in mathematics. Just like many scientists, mathematicians like to classify things in their fields and they do so with numbers. So there are a couple of groups of numbers that mathematicians use. One group is called the natural numbers. The natural numbers, if I put a set brace here, include the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Those three dots just means continues in that pattern. These numbers are sometimes called the counting numbers. The whole numbers are all the natural numbers plus the number zero. These seem fairly intuitive. However, throughout history, it took a long time for humans to accept the idea that there could be a number, namely zero, to represent nothing. It's not much too much of a leap to go from there to what are known as the integers. The integers are both the positive and negative whole numbers. Now, you can think of many applications probably in life where you have negative numbers, like a negative temperature or a negative bank account or a loss of yardage in football. So we can see that there are definitely uses for integers. Rational numbers are numbers that can be written in the form A over B, where A and B are integers. And b is not, of course, equal to 0. If b is equal to 0, we would be dividing by 0, and that's not allowed. So this is anything that can be written as a fraction, like 4 fifths, or minus 100, over 92, or even 5, because you can write 5 as a fraction, as 5 over 1, or 10 over 2. So all integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, are rational numbers. Real numbers are the rational plus the irrational. Now you might remember from a previous section that irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be written as fractions, like the square root of 3, for example. The square root of 3 cannot be represented exactly as a fraction. It is a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. There are some famous irrational numbers like the number pi. Number pi is a decimal that does not repeat and does not terminate. This takes care of most of our needs for numbers. However, we've seen in this class that we do not get a real number when we try to take the square root of a negative number. For example, your answer, when you've seen square root of negative 16, has often been no real solution. That is correct. However, mathematicians found it cumbersome not to have the square root of a negative number, so they defined a unit that represents the square root of a negative number. That is called the imaginary unit. So I'm giving you here a definition, and the definition is that i equals the square root of negative 1. Or another way to say that is i squared equals negative 1. i is called the imaginary unit. Now this may trouble you because it doesn't seem to have any physical application. And that is true, it doesn't seem to have any physical application. But if you think back in history, mathematicians in society had troubles with things like negative numbers and zero. So we're going to accept that there is this thing called the imaginary unit. That allows us to do a problem like the square root of negative 16. You might recall that with square roots, if I find two numbers that I multiply together to equal the number inside the square root, I can divide this up like this. And we know that the square root of 16 equals 4. And we know that the square root of negative 1, by definition, equals i. So we'd write i times 4, or it's more conventional for us to put the number in front and say 4i. 
square root of negative 25 is 25 times negative 1. Square root of 25 times square root of negative 1, which gives me square root of 25 is 5. Square root of negative 1 is i. So this is how we're going to represent these numbers. Before we've said no real solution, now we're going to use this symbol i to represent this. Be careful. Realize that the negative sign needs to be inside the square root, or in more formal terms, as part of the radicand for this i to show up. This, if you recall, means negative the square root of 36. And the square root of 36 is 6. So this is not a problem where i would be involved. OK, let's practice some of these. Let's see if you can do the square root of negative 28. Well, if I look at this, I might say, well, goodness, that's 28 times negative 1. But the square root of 28, you might remember, is 4 times 7 times negative 1, which I can split up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 7 times the square root of negative 1. Now, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 7, I'll just leave as the square root of 7. And then the square root of negative 1 is i. And it is conventional to write the number in front of i. Let's see if you can think about the square root of 90. You might want to pause the video now and come back when you solve this problem. I look at the square root of 90 as 90 times negative 1. And then I think about that as 9 times 10 times negative 1. Square root of 9 times square root of 10 times square root of negative 1. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 10, I'm just going to leave as the square root of 10. Can't be simplified further. And the square root of negative 1 is i. One last example. Let's look at the square root of negative 32. Again, you might want to pause the video and then come back when you have completed. Square root of negative 32 is 16 times 2 times negative 1. Square root of 16 times square root of 2 times square root of negative 1. And that's 4 times the square root of 2 times i. Complex numbers. A number is complex if it can be written in the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and i is the imaginary unit. So for example, we have the number 3 plus 2i. Now remember, this means 3 plus 2 times the square root of negative 1. Here's another complex number, 5 minus i. That means 5 minus the square root of negative 1. But we'll write these complex numbers using the symbol i. Minus 3i does not have a number in front of it. Is that of the form a plus bi? Sure it is, because you could write this as 0 plus minus 3i, where a is 0 and b is negative 3. This number here is called purely imaginary, or just imaginary, because it does not have a real number in front of it. This part of the number is often called the real part, and this is called the imaginary part. So the real part of this number is 5, and the imaginary part is negative 1. By the same idea, 7 can also be written as a complex number. This can be 7 plus 0i. And this, of course, is known as a real number. What this means is that every single real number in the world, 7, square root of 17, 57 over 32, all of those real numbers can be written the real number plus 0i. So all real numbers are complex. OK, with any number system, what we try to do is begin to work with it a little. So here's a problem where I say change ex expression to a complex number. 36. 36 is a real number. 
So I'm just going to write that 36 plus 0i. Very good. Square root of 25, we've seen that the square root of 25 is 5i. So you can be written that way, or 0 plus 5i if you want to use the complete complex notation. Square root of 9 plus square root of negative 3. Well, the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of negative 3, I'll let you work out, is the square root of 3 times i. Now, let's see if you can do this one on your own. 5 minus the square root of negative 7. Pause the video and come back when you have completed. So 5 just remains 5 minus the square root of 7 is 7 times the square root of negative 1. So that's going to be 5 minus the square root of 7 times the square root of negative 1, which is 5 minus square root of 7i. Now, this i in complex numbers are going to occur most frequently when you have equations involving the quadratic formula. So this might look familiar. You might have done something like this, solving a quadratic, and you might have then said this has no real solution, which is still correct. But now that we have i, we can do this. So square root of 18 is 18 times negative 1. And the square root of 18 further, I can do 9 times 2 times the square root of negative 1. And I can even further say 6 plus 3 times the square root of 2, i over 3. Now, you might remember this is not completed. I can factor a 3 out of the top. And then I can divide out the 3's, and I'm left with my final solution, which is 2 plus the square root of 2 i. As with any number, we need to learn how to do some addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Now, with complex numbers, this is particularly easy. We're going to treat this as if this were just an algebraic equation. In other words, I am going to add the real parts. 4 plus 5 is 9. And I'm going to add the imaginary parts, 2i minus 3i is minus 1i. So this can be written as 9 minus 1i, or just 9 minus i. This is kind of just like adding like terms. As another example, look at this one here, 3 minus 2i minus 4 minus 2i. My first step might be to take that minus sign and distribute it and get minus 4 plus 2i. So, 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 2i plus 2i is 4i. And there is your solution. Here's a problem that I might ask you to do by yourself. Try this problem and then restart the video once you have completed it. Okay, 4i, I'm going to distribute the minus 3. Gives me minus 15 plus 3i. 4i plus 3i is 7i minus 15, or sometimes we write this in a plus bi form like this. The last thing I'd like to talk to you about in this video is multiplication. Just like working with binomials, you might choose to do this multiplication by using the FOIL method. 5 times 3 is 15. That's the first. The outer is minus 5i. The inner is 2i times 3, which is 6i. And the last is minus 2i squared. Now, we're not done. We have like terms here. Minus 5i and 6i give me plus 1i. And since you know that i squared equals negative 1, this is minus 2 times negative 1. Now, minus 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So that gives me 15 plus i plus 2. And the 15 and 2, of course, are like terms. And this gives me 17 plus i. So this is very much like working with binomials. The only big difference here is that this i squared equals negative 1. And you need to convert that to a real number. 
Here's another example. Well, let's try this. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4i is negative 12i. 4 times i times 3 is positive 12i. And 4i times negative 4i is minus 16i squared. i squared, again, equals negative 1. So this becomes 9. Oh, look what happens to the minus 12i and the 12i. They become 0i. So I'm not even going to write that down. Minus 16i squared is minus 16 times negative 1, or plus 16. And notice the answer here is 25. Now, this tells you that when you multiply a complex number by itself, with the exception that the sign in the middle is different, it turns into a real number. That relationship between a complex number and another complex number, where the, uh, the only difference is the sign in the middle, is given a special term. It's called a conjugate. The conjugate of a complex number, a plus bi, is a minus bi. Now, I want you to understand here that a and b are not necessarily positive. So if b is negative, then a minus bi is a positive number. For example, what is the conjugate of 3 plus i? Well, in this case, a is 3 and b is 1. So I have 3 minus 1i, or 3 minus i. What is the conjugate of 5 minus 2i? In this case, a is 5 and b is negative 2. So a is still a minus b is the opposite of b, which becomes plus 2. I hope you find this video useful.